Good noon, everyone. I am Pastor Edwin. I am your delivery boy today of the Word of God. I'm so blessed to bring to you a word. I, you know, uh, remember Sister Shari started this message, how to live your life. You count your life wisely because you got only one life to live and, and that you have to use this for God's glory. And I was just like uh, meditating that. And it's really amazing how God has given us the opportunity to experience His goodness. But at the same time, there is a call to the believers and to the church where we need to understand how to live in these times and in these seasons and in this generation. The Holy Spirit is calling and Holy Spirit is reminding the body of Christ. Every believer, not only the pastors, leaders, not only the spiritual leaders of the church, but every believer. The world is getting darker, but the church is getting brighter. But you need to understand that there are decisions and choices that we have to make as a believer. There are things that we need to decide, and, and that is a decision that aligns with the will of God. And that's why my message for today is living your life, living your life in the Spirit. Living your life in the Spirit. I pray that God will speak to you as you listen to this message. Amen? Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak to us. I pray that we will not just listen to another sermon, but we will receive a message from the Spirit of God for such a time as this. I pray that you will open the ears and the eyes of your, of your people and listen to what the Spirit is saying in these times in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. There is a call. A call for every believer to live a life in the Spirit in these days because the days are evil. There is an anointing for ministry, and that's where charisma or the ability to minister, and it flows out from a minister so that signs and wonders will happen. And we praise God for supernaturals. You know, last Sunday, healing and miracles are happening, and that's part of what God is doing in the kingdom of God. So, uh, much more in the coming days that the church and the body of Christ will be anointed to minister and to display the supernatural of God. But there is also a calling and the anointing not only for the charisma or the ministry, but the anointing for character. The call to live in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit is empowering you to live a life according to His ways. And that is to protect your family, to protect your children, to protect the future, and not for you to be a source of pain to your loved ones. God wanted your family and your life to be an instrument of God's glory. And so there is a call for you to live in the Spirit. There's a call for all of us to walk according to His ways. Can you say amen? Because if we will not take heed to the calling of the Spirit of God, we will be influenced by the world. We will live in the flesh. And because of that, we will experience regrets and we will experience guilt, pain, and we will live defeated, which is, that is not the design of God to all of us. The design of God for us is to live victoriously. Can you say amen? But there are challenges, and we're still living here on earth. And that is why God is calling us not only to protect your anointing to minister, but to protect your private and personal character. 
Can you say amen? This is for all of us. To protect your character so that God will see also the covering for your family. You know, there's a saying, and I just read this this morning. It's so good. It says, adversity doesn't build your character. It reveals it. It is in, in the every day that you choose what to, what to, what to uh, do in your character. The, the nurturing of what is right. The life in your private, personal life with the Lord. Because if we are playing with sin, if we are playing with what the enemy is doing, right now it's secret, but it eventually it will be opened up and it will be painful for your family. And the Spirit of God says, walk with me and I will protect you. Listen to me and I will carry you. Can you say amen? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 18. It says, look carefully then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time because the days are evil. The influence of the world to us is stronger than ever. And the enemy is trying to deceive you that sometimes righteousness, living a righteous life is an alien thing, is a strange thing. And to do what is unrighteous and to do what is not right is a normal thing. You can see that all over the place. But I pray that the body of Christ will stand up for righteousness and they will not be ashamed and be embarrassed to do what is right. In the midst of darkness, in the midst of unrighteousness, that the church will rise up and display, you know, God's character. We don't adapt ourselves to the trend. Sometimes you have to stand up alone. But it is, it's, is, is it worth it? Yes. Because people are still looking for a genuine thing, the real thing. And believers can display that. Can you say amen? So do not be unwise, but be wise. If I say wise, you're not just smart. Wise in a sense that you know what is right and what is wrong, and you will choose what is right. You will stand what is right. Verse 17, Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled, say be filled. That word be filled is not only one time experience. In the original language it says every single day. It is a continuous being filled. It is continuous, continued work of the Spirit of God over your life. It is a continuous walk with the Spirit. It is a continuous being immersed with what the Spirit of God is doing. He wants you not only to be prosperous in your business, He wants you to be a display of God's glory and righteousness in your business. In every career that you are in, he wants you to be a proof of God's righteousness. And so there's a call for us to be filled. The question, how do we live in the Spirit? I'll give you three uh, points or truth where we can live in the Spirit. And Apostle Paul really and clearly outlined this in Romans chapter 8. Verse 1 to 17. Let's start there in verse 1. Read in verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation. Say, no condemnation. No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. 
who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through flesh, God did it by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh. So the death of Jesus in the flesh is the condemnation of sin in our flesh. So therefore, we can live free from condemnation. Can you say amen? Come on. Hallelujah. And that righteous requirement, it says in verse 4, of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal, um, carnal mind is enmity before, before God or against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9, But you are not in the flesh, but you are in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. I will post there so many times. If we read this verse, we use it for healing. And I believe so, the same principle is applied there. But in the context of this chapter, uh, the, the, the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead that dwells in us is the one working so that our flesh will not be operating, it will be empowered, uh, we will be empowered to subdue our flesh. And if I say flesh here, it's not actually literally the body, but it speaks of sin and sinful nature and selfish desire and all of those things. But you know what? You can overcome flesh because the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead the one that uh, works in the body, the dead body of Jesus, is also working in you. If He can raise the dead, He can raise your mortal body, and He can bring life over your body so that you can overcome sin. Can you say amen? Come on, let's give a clap offering and to the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Hmm. I have to continue. Guess I'm... It says it in verse 9. No, in verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, not to the sinful nation. If I say flesh, again, it speaks of sinful nature, selfish desire. We are not debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Tatai, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And of children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, even did we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified together in Him. Three points. Number one, how to live in the Spirit. 
Live your life with the freedom that the Spirit has given. Freedom in the Spirit. Verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation. You are not being condemned by God. And I like what Pastor Giselle mentioned this morning. Your identity is that you are already a child of God. You are accepted. God settled your identity and your position before Him. It's all done. You are not rejected. You are a child of God. You are not condemned by heaven. And you are free from condemnation. You're not supposed to be living in insecurity, knowing that you are accepted and you are valued by heaven. You are not rejected or judged or condemned by heaven. And there's something about being free that releases your potentials and your identity and your confidence and your dignity and your value and worth. Remember, if you're operating in freedom, it is a, an operation by which you can choose freely and you can use your free will to do what is right and, and how good it is that you are doing things like giving, as Pastor Amelette is saying, you are not obligated to give, but you are free to give because you have understood that this is the law that God has put into order. Not a law to obligate, but it is really a financial law that it will prosper you. Can you say amen? It will protect your wealth. So you're free to follow that. You're free to love. You're free to forgive. You're free to uh, embrace your enemy and bless them. Mm -hmm. There's something about this freedom that we become productive. We become at peace. You can sleep well at night because, you know, God has accepted you and God is listening to your prayer. That kind of life is what the Holy Spirit wanted you to live. Now, if you follow the flesh, that's where the works of the enemy is going to come in to condemn you. That's why Holy Spirit said, don't walk in the flesh. Okay? Those who are in Christ, those who are not walking in flesh, by starting to have a relationship with Him, personal encounter with Him, and choosing to walk in the Spirit. This means that your personal encounter with the Lord, receiving Him as your Lord and Savior, is the starting point of a life that is free before God. It is a life that is full of potential. potential. And it is a life where you can say, God, I thank you for your freedom. You know, uh, there's this law of spirit of life. Let me just read. Uh, sorry, I never give this to the clicker. Romans chapter 7. I want to read it in the New Living Translation, which is good. Romans 7, verse 14 to 20. Because before, when... I never received the Lord. Alam niyo yung kantang, yung rap na, Gusto kong bumait, pero hindi ko magawa. Okay? Don't you know that before the guy rapping that, Apostle Paul is already rapping it here in Romans chapter 7. It says here in verse 14, So the trouble, the trouble is not with the law or the principle, or the Word of God. For it is spiritual and good. The trouble is what? With me. For I am all too human, slave to sin. That's your position before. That's your identity before. You are controlled. You are, you cannot decide. Let me just read so that we can understand. Verse 15. I don't really understand myself. Ito nga, ito nga yun, di ba? For I want to do what is right, but I don't 
do it. Can you relate before? I know what I'm doing is wrong, but I cannot do what is right. Instead, I do what I hate. Oh, but if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree with the law, the principle, the command, or the standards of God that is good. So I am not, I'm not the one doing wrong. It is what? It is sin living in me that does it. So when you are unbeliever, you're like a robot. Whatever sin will tell you, you will do. You know it's wrong. You know it will destroy your future. You know it will destroy your family. You know it will destroy your soul. And you want to get out from that. But you cannot because you're a slave. But praise God. God solved the problem. Can you say amen? Romans chapter 8, verse 2 to 4. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Hallelujah! From the law of what? Sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God gave His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin, so that He can condemn sin. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. This is where you need to understand your identity now, when before you are a controlled Slave by sin, now you are free. Now you can make a decision that you can do what is right. Can you say amen? You are empowered. The law of sin and death is deemed powerless anymore and nullified through the law of the spirit of life. A very good illustration is this, the law of gravity. Now, I researched the meaning of law of gravity in physics, and Google gave me formula, okay? You know, I failed in my physics class, so I'm yeah, sorry. So, I, it's not my favorite uh, subject, you know? I just want to know the basic meaning of law of gravity. Don't give me formula, okay? Well, the basic meaning of gravity is that what goes up must come down. That's a good one. Everything that goes up must come down. So gravity, the law of gravity, will limit you to fly. But someone discovered, also Isaac Newton, the third law. It is the law of thrust and lift. The law of thrust and lift says that you can overcome gravity and you can fly. And that is where law of gravity is still there, but we can fly now. That's why we have airplane, you know. We can go to Boracay, to Palawan, you know. We can, uh, we can fly. I believe I can fly. No. <laughs> Diva. So, what does it mean? The law of gravity is still there, but it is powerless over the law of trust and lift. The law of sin is still lurking in your flesh. <laughs> but play, praise God, you have the ability to overcome it because the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus is now operating in your life. So you can overcome whatever temptation that you are facing. You cannot say, no, I'm just human. No, you are human with supernatural power from the Spirit of God to overcome any temptation. Come on, let's give a clap offering to the Lord for that. Now, just as gravity is still there, temptation is still there, and your body will still. In fact, I, I love to hear that in New Living Translation, in Colossians chapter 3, it says, sin is still lurking inside of you. This sinful nature. And, and all of us, to be honest, we, we make mistakes. 
Are you with me? I'm not saying you're perfect because if you're perfect, then we're in heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But we fail. Sometimes we, we, uh, we make mistakes. But one, one thing that is good is that in your position, you are not condemned. You are forgiven. You just have to ask for, you know, forgiveness from the Lord. God, I fail. You give me a chance. Yes, I can give you a chance. You can still rise up from that sin. You can still come out from that dark world. You are not supposed to live like you're a slave. You can easily get out from that because you are already a child of God. Can you say amen? So, live your life with freedom in the Spirit. I, I will use my life to walk in freedom. I, I, you know, as we are singing a while ago about that amazing grace, it's really amazing, really, the grace of God. Because, you know, without the grace of God, we cannot be who we are right now. We cannot do what we're doing right now. But praise God for this, you know, simple understanding that you are forgiven by heaven and you have another chance to live a life of freedom again. And you can enjoy what God has prepared for you. Your future is going to be protected. And you have all the blessings. And you have all the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit will guide you. If you will walk with Him. Can you say amen? Those who are in Christ. That means you are positionally in Christ. But by choice you have to yield yourself to the Spirit of God. It is a choice every single day. Every single day, you will choose to forgive. Every single day, you will have to make a decision. Holy Spirit, I will worship today. Even though I don't want to worship, but I will worship today. You know, the moment you make a decision to worship, Holy Spirit will empower you to worship. That's amazing, you know. If you are yielded and you are obeying to say, God, I will forgive him. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and He will give you the grace to forgive. He will give you the grace not to be bitter. He will give you the grace to love the person in spite of what He has done. Now, I'm not trying to belittle sin. I'm just saying you can overcome in, that, in, in your life. Can you say amen? Hmm. So, Sin is already powerless. Don't let sin come again. The only thing that the, the enemy or, the, of, or sin or sinful nature can enslave you is you permit them. Uh, there is no such thing as if, oh, I never realized I'm doing sin. No. You made a decision to do that sin. Yep. You made a decision to stay and watch that thing in social media and the Holy Spirit is already telling you why are you watching that why are you and you know the Holy Spirit knows your heart and knows your mind the enemy will not know your mind he will give you some pictures and he will watch you being entrapped into that kind of sin and he will watch you fall you know sometimes the enemy he will just say, Sige lang. <laughs> Sige lang. Masarap yan. Walang nakakakita sa iyo. Walang nakakaalam. Walang makakaalam sa ginagawa mo. That's the deception of the enemy. Wow, so silent here. I'm just so, so strong. Sala. You know, in your private life, if you know that you are accountable with the Lord, God is watching. And it is not in a way where He controls you. He will give you conviction. Holy Spirit will gently remind you. It will destroy your future. Stop it now. I think I'm talking to someone today. God is concerned about your future, your children, and your family. 
while you have the time, make a decision to stop it now. You know, what is that? I believe Holy Spirit is showing you that. No, oh, second point, okay? <laughs> so you live your life in the Spirit with the freedom that God has given to you. Number two, live your life led by the Spirit of God. Verse 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. We're not, we're not actually supposed to be obligated to follow the flesh. That's what Paul is saying. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Not literally, but your future will die, your passion will die, your family will be affected. But if the Spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Verse 14, and this is where many believers have to understand because you have the ability to hear the voice of the Spirit. You cannot deny the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, if you are in Christ, Holy Spirit will be so strong to speak to you. But He will not control you. He will lead you. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. He's leading you because He knows your future will be destroyed. Come, follow me. No, don't do that, anak. Do this. Verse 14 or 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. So what God is saying is that He doesn't want you to go back to a place where you are living in fear because it will be exposed. The things that you're doing is not wrong. He doesn't want you to live in that kind of life. And you have to live in wisdom, not in, in experience. And you know, people will say experience will teach you. No, that's the worst, sometimes the worst teacher of life. Experience. Because experience can be painful. And sometimes you will, you will really think, God, God, I should have done this. God, have a mercy for you, and God will restore you. Can you say amen? That's how powerful the grace of God is. In the midst of your failure, He can restore you. But how much better that you will not go through that pain and will love your life in God. Can you say amen? He doesn't want you, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, not rejection. You're not rejected by God. You are not insecure. You are not supposed to be insecure. The security that you are looking for, for that fleshly desire, is not enough to satisfy you. The real satisfaction is following the will of God. It might be hard right now. It might be boring right now. But it will bless you in the future. Can you say amen? Come on, let's give a clap offering to the Lord. I'm really teaching here. I don't know. Something in the Spirit is being given to the people of God nowadays. Hallelujah. Because I, I really believe the anointing of the Spirit of God. Oh, the move. Oh, the, the glory. I love that. But there's also glory in character. There's also glory in your private life where you don't have anything that you're hiding. You're open before God. And I pray, I pray, all of us, I'm not saying that we can all be perfect. I pray that if there's something that the Holy Spirit is trying to arrest in your life, yield to it. While it's, there's still time before it's too late. Are, are you getting my point, mga kapatid? Before it's too late. If the Holy Spirit is telling you something, Obey. Be led. Verse 16, The Spirit Himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Anak ka ng Diyos, anak ka ng Panginoon. Hindi yan ang buhay mo. That's not your life. You're not created in that life. You have a better life. You have a better stature. You have a better identity. It doesn't fit with what you're doing right now. 
stop it. And as you stop it, you will see the glory of obeying the Spirit of God. Can you say amen? You are led by the Spirit. You're led by the Spirit. Did you follow? You're not controlled. You're led. God has given you the freedom to obey. Those who are obedient, those who are willing and obedient will eat the what? The fruit, the good of the land. Be obedient. Can you say amen? And lastly, I got only three minutes. Hallelujah. So live a life, sustain or uh, live a life, freedom in Christ. Be led by the Spirit of God. And number three, live a life sustained. Sustained. Holy Spirit is sustaining you. Sustained by the Spirit of God. Uh, verse. Wait, my notes is okay, losing. Okay. Verse 18, for I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So the challenges, the suffering, whatever it is that you're facing right now, Holy Spirit will say, all will be well. Kaya mo yan. That's just temporary. But the glory is eternal. Can you say amen? You might be probably experiencing some challenges right now, but the glory of God will re be revealed not only to you, not only upon you, but in you. For the earnest expectation that creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him was subjected in hope. Let, let's just go to verse 23. Not only that, but we also have the first fruits of the Spirit, the Spirit of God in us. Who's telling us all will be well. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption of the redemption of our body. You know, this body, sinful nature, will be one day be glorified. So you just wait for hope. Be patient. Verse 24. For we are saved in this hope. But hope that is seen not, is not hope. For why does one still hope for what, it's, what he sees? Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our what? Weaknesses. The Holy Spirit will sustain you. For we do not know what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Holy Spirit will help you to pray in every challenges that you are facing. And then it says in verse 28, and this is something that you need to understand. Before 28, there is 27. That means you pray in the Spirit. Of course, you know. But what does it mean in verse 28? For we know, say I know, that all things work together for good to those Love God to those who are called according to His purpose. Holy Spirit will sustain you through the trials. Holy Spirit will help you in prayer. And you will overcome any challenges that you are facing in life. You just have to connect with Him. You just have to pray in the Spirit. You just have to just be obedient. And there are things that sometimes we see in life we don't understand. We just hope God. We will never quit. No go out, out of the will of God, but we will follow God. When sometimes you are doing the right thing and still troubles are coming in, you will just stay on course. Because you know the Holy Spirit will help you along the way. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Can I just ask Eric Khan to come up? I just love this song. Can we all stand up for a while? Just give thanks to the Lord. Did you get something today? Spirit of God. And be thankful unto the Lord. Right here. Thank you, Jesus. And then, we'll pray. You know, when you are worshiping, 
and singing this song, you will realize how amazing God's grace over your life. It's really amazing that it not only saves you for eternity, but it empowers you for your earthly life. Tomorrow, you will overcome. Holy Spirit has assured that to you. That's why you will always give thanks unto the Lord and declare His grace over you. Because tomorrow will be another day. You will face challenges in life, but you will just say, Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Come on, let's sing this song right now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Lord. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to feel and grace my fears really how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone oh, I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me oh, and like a flood His mercy reigns unending love amazing Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. An ending love, amazing. One last time, sing amazing. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy that I would like to pray. First one, if you haven't received the Lord Jesus in your life, this is the beginning of a new life that is waiting for you. Never remember, I received the Lord in my heart. Then today is the day of salvation for you. If that's you, I want you to pray with me and make this as your personal prayer. And say this with me, together with the congregation. Make this as your declaration of faith that you are receiving God and you will follow Him. And you say, Amen. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I open my heart. I invite you to come in. Be the Lord of my life. Today I declare, you are the Son of God. And I believe you and I will follow you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. This is the beginning of new life over you. I want you to follow Him all the days of your life. Second people, there are people here, and I, while I was standing there, Spirit of God says, I want you to pray for those people who are dealing with fleshly failures. And you might be thinking, I made a mistake 
My life is in ruin. I don't have any choice but to suffer the consequence. But the Holy Spirit is saying, today is a new beginning for you. And if you are that person, I'll pray for you right now. You don't have to leave your hands. You don't have to identify yourself. So the Holy Spirit knows you. Your future is still protected. What God is asking you is to come back to Him. Repent, confess, and ready to ask for a new mercy. He will restore everything that was stolen because of that sin. Let me pray for you. I pray, Father God, for this person. Probably there's a mistakes or sin that was committed. I thank you that your grace, the same grace that saved him or her, is the same grace that is operating to restore that person. I thank you that he will make a decision to obey and to yield to the Spirit of God because your future, his future, the, the future of this person is still protected. God is a God of chances. God is a God of second chance. And He will give you another one. And if you fail again, He will give you another one. If you fail again, He will give you another one. Like this prodigal son who destroys his life. But when he came back to his father, he was restored. God is waiting to restore you. Can you say amen? You just have to make a decision. Yeah, I will go back to my father. I will enjoy the blessing that I lost. And I will just give my life to him. So Father God, I thank you. Thank you for restoration in Jesus' name. Thank you that whatever is lost will be restored back. Thank you, Lord, that a new beginning, a new beginning I declare today, a new day, is starting, starting this time forward in Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. God bless.